Welcome to the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast, where our mission is to help you learn and grow by sharing the tips, ideas, tricks, and more that we learn from speaking with top producing real estate agents around the country every single day. I'm Matt Benelli here with Ninja Coaching founder and owner Garrett Fry. And although we focus a lot on real estate, this podcast is not just for real estate agents. It is for anyone who is looking to better their business and increase their income per hour in order to enjoy all of the things that life has to offer. So prepare to take in a lot of value that you can put into action in your business and your life. Enjoy the show. guys hey welcome back um matt and garrett here with ninja coaching and uh today we've been talking a lot about this it's kind of the time in the era that we're all in right now but we decided that databases is something that we need to hopefully have a little bit of a deeper discussion on absolutely i think you know at the time of recording this too uh, you know i'm not sure when you are listening to this but we're getting closer to the end of the year and this is the time when people get into business planning which is something we'll talk about in another episode but people are looking at different tools and things that can help boost their business and a lot of them have to do with the database and we find that there are some people that are missing the mark just starting with their database so this is going to be fun to dive into yeah i think that uh, you know, we talk about a ninja that it's the it's the nervous system of your business. And it's probably one of the most broken things. You know, when I talk to a new agent that's coming and looking for coaching, uh, number one thing I'll ask them is, what the, what's the size of your database? Most of them kind of go, well, I guess it's about maybe, well, I don't really have it that clear, or, you know, I never really spent that much time on it, or, you know, they've got all these, these answers. But when it comes down to it, usually they can give me a number. Usually they're like, eh, it's around this number. And then the next step I always ask him is, is, is that, say, if you had to define that group for me, how many of them do you actually know? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh gosh, well, I have to subtract out this many because these are all the people I've picked up through open houses. These are all the people I've picked up through lead generation stuff that we're doing and you know, internet stuff coming in. So really I've got this group in there. And then the next question I ask him is, out of that group, how many of them could you call every 30 days and have a wonderful conversation with them? And that's when they're like, oh, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, could it be like, I guess there could be like 50 people in there, maybe 30. I don't know. And then what I always love is once we get started into coaching and really working with them, that number that they gave me of 50 people all of a sudden is like 20. Yeah. They're like, it wasn't that big. It wasn't that big at all. It's way smaller than I thought. And so the reason that I, I'm so excited to talk about databases today and get deeper into databases is because it is probably the number one broken spot I see in people's businesses. And we're trying to build a relationship business. We're trying to build a referral-based business. And it's the number one broken thing that I see in there that has to be fixed before you can move forward with the rest of the stuff. 100%. And you know, I was actually just speaking to a client uh, this past week about that that whole process that we go through when we first start about, okay, how big is your database? How many of these people could you talk to on a regular basis? And then I said, okay, that, and she gave me a big number. She's like, oh, it was like 200. And I was like, oh my God, that's a lot of people. I said, well, how many of those would you actually call? How many of those people would you call and talk to on a regular basis? And she said, well, probably more like 30 to 40. And I was like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting, Matt, I don't know if you've seen this also, but I had a gentleman um, that I'm having him go through and clean it up right now. And he's always resisted me. He's up in Seattle. And he's always just not been 100% on staying in flow with his sphere of influence. And I had to finally say, I said, have you really gone through and clarified the list? Because it, we're in a society that's bigger is better. Right. The, you know, the, the higher the number, it's got to be better. You know, it's like, you know, it, it was constantly looking at that bigger is better, fancier is better. What he had done is over the last five years, every single time I've tried to get him to make that list, he's embellished on it and built it too big. This time I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you just to go through. And I said, people that like make your heart sing. Like when you look at their name, you go like, I love them. Those are the ones that get the highlighter. Those are the ones that you're going to be able to sit there and say, look, that's the person that I want to put on that list and grow and cultivate over here. And it's funny is I got a text from him yesterday or the day before. And he said, oh my gosh, he goes, the amount of people in here that I could have been talking to that I haven't been talking to because I didn't have my list built right. What a missed opportunity. And I think it's interesting that 
the clearer that list is and the, clear, the clearer you get with that, all the other systems become so easy. The lunches, so easy. The, the notes, so incredibly easy, the clearer you are with your people. So, yeah, you know, you hit you hit a very key thing there that I think a lot of people ignore. And that was who are the people in your database that light you up, that make you want to go talk to them, that make you want to have lunch with them? Because most people think, oh, I just need to be connected to so many people because everyone is a potential client. And I'm not saying that that's a false statement, but it does confuse you. And I think when we think about how people build friends lists on Facebook and connections on LinkedIn, they're like, oh, more is always better. And I get connection requests on LinkedIn sometimes from people I have no idea. And if I don't know you, like, that's sorry, we're not going to get connected. And I think there is a feeling that people have when they're going through even this exercise, Garrett, that you've put out to everybody on this last 90 days and working on your database where people think my value is in how many people I'm connected to. And they feel for some reason that they're not valuable if they don't have a a large database and you got to flip it around to exactly what you said is like start with the people who you want to be connected with yeah and if, when you find that group what's cool is that it's not work anymore and that's where i see a lot of new ninjas and and new uh, people that are kind of getting into this they come in going like i'm really having a hard time with my calls and i'm like in part of the back of my mind i'm going like how in the world could you possibly be having a hard time with your calls because the only people that should be on that list are ones that you're excited about talking to. And if you find there's only five people on that list, that's okay. <laughs> that's yeah. where we start. Yeah. <laughs> like, but that that's where I think I find people having the hardest time. So you start loading people on that they shouldn't have on there. So Matt, if you look like with inside of your people, first off, where do you put all these people? And do you have systems or software programs that you really like that you've seen the kind of the best results with? Yeah, I do. And I, I look at how I keep track of my people in two different ways, right? I have a warehouse of my contacts because everything starts with a very big contact list. We all have people in our phone, people in Google and Outlook or in a spreadsheet or something. And I like to get all those things in one place, regardless of where they are in my database. So I start with Google Contacts just because that's where I've used for a while and it's very comfortable for me. I put everybody who goes into my contact goes into Google and that syncs with my phone. Once they're in there, whether it's somebody I've never talked to yet, but I've gotten their name, they're just in there so that when I am searching for them, no matter what device I'm on, I can find their name and in there has their number and email address or whatever information I might have about them to start. From there, I will section people off in my Google contacts. I have different groups on kind of how these people relate to me. You know, what are they having to do with real estate, with coaching, family, family and friends? I actually don't categorize because I know who my family and friends are. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm not in that category. <laughs> Garrett's under, you know, professional connections. <laughs> <laughs> Business opportunities. Great. Thanks. Keep going. So for the people that I don't know well, I put in the notes how I met them. You know, how did this person come to me? How did I get connected with this person? Just so I have that initial recall of how did I meet these people. And then from there, it'll go to my CRM. And I've tried many different ones. When I was actively listing and selling homes, I loved a program called Contactually. I'm not saying that everybody has to go out and get that. But what I liked about it, it was very relationship focused, which is what a CRM should be versus being transactional focused. Because when you start looking at software... Everything has different things that'll do, right? There's all these different purposes for the product, whether it's pipeline management, lead management, things like that. And there are ones that do those specific things very well. And then there's ones that try to do it all. And the ones that try to do it all end up being very expensive. And from what I've seen is most people have them and say they use them, but they don't really use them. There are a few people that really do and awesome, great, go for it. Currently, I'm using a program called Close, C-L-O-Z-E, -E, that I like because it's very, very, very simple in terms of managing relationships and the way, and it's customizable to set it up the way you want to do it. I've been enjoying that. So that's kind of the systems that I use. But in terms of the qualifications to how to get people into these systems, it starts very simply as, have I met this person or do I have some type of connection to this person that would qualify them to going in that database, in that warehouse? And most people will say, well, I need to have a phone number or an email address for them to go into the warehouse. And that's not true. Well, it's interesting. And I, I like the way you talk about warehouse. I've never heard you say that terminology before. 
it's an interesting way of doing it is that it's really it's a collection of everybody that you know. No, do not doesn't matter how much information you have on them. Like I think I just shared a story with you recently about the teacher of my daughter's school. And basically what I did is I put her in the warehouse. I had her last name because everybody knows their teacher is Mrs. Johnson or Mrs. Whatever. Well, she went into my warehouse. And then I was like, okay, in there, I'm going to start now collecting more information to move her up into maybe a better thing. I laugh at the this thing closed. C-L-O-Z-E, is that how you said it? Yes. Somebody else just gave, they're like, you got to check out this other, this is not one that's Ninja, by the way, but somebody had me go take a look at another one called Conversion, spelled with a K. I'm like, what is wrong <laughs> with people? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, why can't you just spell it normally? <laughs> just call it what it is. But there's, again, there's so many tools out there. I like the warehouse. And it's interesting. I've got a lady that I coach, Lee Carey. She is so funny. She's been working so hard at like trying to build a database and trying to figure it out. And you brought up Google Contacts. What was crazy was I said, just download Google Contacts. Go go get it. Go open it up. I said, I think you probably already have it. So you just don't even realize it because in our world, we're all connected to Google. Most of us don't realize this. Google is watching everything we do. They know everything about us. They know all the people that are in your phone, all the contacts. They know where you drive every single day. They got you covered. She opened it up and she goes, it's all here. Yeah. So what do you mean it's all here? She goes, I have a database. <laughs> She goes, I have all, I've got their phone numbers. She goes, I've got their name. She's like, it's anybody that she's ever put into her phone and anybody to recall her that she's put a name on. It just naturally funneled it into Google contacts. And a lot of people don't look at that as a viable use of a actual real estate or business database. It works. I think it's great. If you have an email address, which everybody listening to this definitely has an email address, it saves every person that you ever receive email from or send email to in some sort of section of whatever contact manager is behind that email. And most of you are probably either a Gmail person or an Outlook person. There are some still some AOL.coms and other things out there too, but I'm sure <laughs> there's contact things behind that. And if you have an iPhone, which probably 70% of you do, it looks through all of your communications and suggests things. Like when I go into my contact, Contacts, there's like a different color for like, hey, we read your email from this person. And in the signature, it had phone numbers. And we think that these phone numbers relate to that person. And it's just, it's all there. So I mean, whether that freaks you out or you think that's cool, hey, there's an opportunity to use it to start with that warehouse. And the database then will live inside that warehouse. And that's something that you can then actively manage. And um, I think we'll dive into that probably, well... Let's dive into it now. I think it's funny, as you said, does it freak you out or does it, you know, do you think it's cool? And I think I'm right on the age cusp that I find both sides to it. <laughs> uh, because, you know, I totally remember, you know, having the, the phone attached to the wall uh, where it was just you on that phone. And the minute, like, remember the first day that it showed up that there was actual, like, a number that would pop up and you're like, wow, I can see who's calling me before, like, that whole thing. I've been through all of that. And I think it's incredible now the databases that we have and, and how everything that we do is tracked. But in running a business and knowing and building a good database and I think building this warehouse, it's all there. Like we just need to access the information and start working with it. It's interesting. So you mentioned Contactually. Contactually is a big one that I've heard out there a lot. I know a lot of ninjas who use that, who use Contactually. Yes. And I'd say in the last couple, like maybe year and a half, that name has been like, I'm hearing it all over the place. I've got a couple of really high producing ninjas that I coach that have you know, used um, uh, Referral Maker, which is Buffini system. And mm -hmm. I actually hear great stuff about that one. I've had lots of people that have loved it. And I've gone in and looked at it and it's never been the right system for me. That's not just because I'm ninja. Um, I, I'll, I will use any system that works, just so everybody's clear. <laughs> I did not... The they right say that the, the best CRM system that out there for you is the one that you actually use. <laughs> and I think so many people get caught up in like, oh, well, I want the best one. And this person said it's the best. It's like, well, if you use it, great, awesome. That's going to be really, really productive for you. But if you pay for it and don't use it, then it's not going to be. Like I know people who love Top Producer. Top Producer is probably one of the most well-known real estate CRMs, probably most widely quote unquote used. But I also know a lot of people who have it and don't even use it. Oh, you took the question out of my mouth because what I was going to ask you is what is the number one system that you see that is highly recommended that people sign up for and it, it's awesome if they use it. it gosh if you use that system it is over the top but I think 90% of the people that I know that sign up for it and use it don't use it 
then it's just an expense. Yeah, then it's just like, oh, I'm, I'm paying for it and you're not using it. And then you're, then you're back to this square one of like, well, how big's my database and who's in it? So, well, before we even talk more about what you can use a CRM for, I think one key thing too is get the warehouse set up. And guess what? Once you put people into the warehouse, you don't have to worry about taking people out. They're always there. But what you do want to do is make sure that you actively manage your database. Your database will live inside your warehouse. You put everybody in your warehouse. Then you got to decide, okay, who are the people that I know and they know me and actively still know? Because your database, Garrett, you always say this, your database is going to atrophy about 15% every single year. When people move out of your database, don't take them out of your warehouse. Just have a section in your warehouse that's like, here's my database. And then they just go, live somewhere else in your warehouse for the time being because they may come back in to your world or yes. maybe they're gone permanently. Who knows? But we do want to make sure that we actively manage the people that we know and they know us because that is the qualifier for someone being in your database. As you've said many, many times, Garrett, and the way you started off this last 90 days thing that's going on, maybe not at the time that you or listener is listening to this, but the qualifier for somebody going in your database is that you have to know something about them. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's their email address or their phone number. That should not be the qualifier to get somebody in there. You know their name and you know something about them that you can put in the notes section. I have people in my database that I don't have a phone number or an email, but they're still in my Google. And once I find their phone number and email, that'll go in there. So going along those lines, it's interesting like this, the software that I was recently introduced to, which was conversion, which is again, one that I'm not recommending for ninjas out there. So as I'm saying that, erase that from your mind, that name. But what's interesting is, is that like, that's a system that I was researching. And when I was talking with the developer of it, I asked him, I said, you know, what is the qualifier to put somebody into the database in here? Like to put their name in, you call it your warehouse or whatever. He said, you have to have a name and you have to have a phone number. And I said, is there any way to put them in with just in the notes, something you know about them? Like I could put in Matt Benelli and I could put in like small dogs. You do. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I have two. I have two small dogs. So yeah, that, that works. So I, I may put that into there. You know, I might put, uh, you know, uh, built a home. He, uh, you know, you, you have new construction house that you recently moved into. You know, I may put those little piece of notes in there of those things that I know about you. Once I start gathering all that stuff, you know, that's that's what I need to put you into the database. But the reality is, is that people go and they say, well, I'm not worried about the notes. I'll fill the notes in later. First, I need to put the name and the phone number and the email address in. And that's the biggest thing with building a database that I want people to get really clear on. You need to have a system that will allow you to put a name in and notes. Hands down, that is the most important part of your entire system. And Microsoft Excel can work really well for that, for people who are like, well, I'm not, you know, I don't have Google or I don't know how to use all that stuff. Microsoft Excel works great. And one of the key things that you can do in something like Microsoft Excel, which I don't think I can do in my Google contacts, although I'll I'll check it out and investigate this, is you can search your spreadsheet for those keywords. Like Garrett has twins. So I'd say I'd put in his notes, twins. I could go into Excel and search that and everybody who I've written a note on with that word in it will pop up. Don't be afraid to use some of the basics for building your warehouse and your database. The CRM will come second because that's how you take action on communicating with your people. And that's how you set up reminders for yourself to make sure that you are staying in flow or keeping track of certain things with your clients too. If you have like schedules of like, okay, we started this and we have all these things coming up and you want to make sure those dates are there. That's that's for an active CRM program, not for your database or your warehouse. Yes. And you know, that this, this is what spurred, you brought up Excel, and this is what spurred this whole topic for me and why I, I wanted to discuss it is that I was on a coaching call last week. One of the gentlemen that I coach, he does, he'll do 100 sides this year. Uh, he on his own. Dave Pepin in Sioux City, Iowa. Amazing agent. If anybody's ever moving to Sioux City, call Dave Pepin. His entire database, we were joking about it because I'm helping him clean it up or getting into business planning. And I said, how many people in your database right now? I said, oh, about 400. I said, great. What CRM are you using right now, Excel? <laughs> I said, you're going to do 100 signs this year operating it all out of Excel? And he goes, yeah. He goes, do you think I need something fancier? I'm like, dude, don't break something that's working. And that's where I, I think that we need to be very, very, very clear with people is, is that for like Dave Pepin, he's got – 
all the important information that he needs. He's got the important information and people are correlated so that he knows who the top people are that he needs to be staying in flow with on a, on a monthly basis. He can quickly search that with Excel. He can quickly go in and sit there and say, okay, well, I want to see my sphere of influence. Well, it pulls up all the people that have sphere typed into their notes somewhere, typed in under their contacts. He can quickly look at his entire database and make sure that he's got everybody that's on the mailing list and everybody on there is getting a piece of mail from him. And at the same time, he can go and schedule his lunches that he needs to, uh, to set up. He does like six lunches a week. So really all he needs is something that's going to just tell him who are my people and what I need to be doing. Now, Matt, what you said earlier that I think is saying, you didn't say it on the on our call here, but you said it when we were talking earlier today was the danger of some of the really fancy systems is that it, it removes the genuine side that like Dave has with his, where when he's looking at a name and he's calling them, he's calling them because he's going like, I really want to check in with Lisa right now. Last time I was talking to her, grandma was sick or things like that. The really fancy database contact management systems pop up and go, call Lisa. It's been a month since you've talked to her. And now we're sitting there going, what in the world am I going to say to Lisa? <laughs> like, how am I going to make this so this sounds genuine and unique? And then we don't like making the phone calls anymore. And we, we shy away from that stuff. I have a great uh, story for this. I was talking to a client this week and she said that, um, I think she said it was her financial advisor or insurance agent, somebody who she communicates with every so often called her. She said he calls at the same time every month. And so this time when he called, I said, oh, you going through your list of people that you're supposed to contact today? And she said, oh. totally threw him off. But she's, she was, you know, she's still like talking to him, but she, and she felt close enough to be there, real with him. But when we were talking about the difference between being in flow and staying in touch and how he was just staying in touch with her, she totally felt it. And when you start to deploy that strategy in a relationship based business like real estate, your people that you're talking to are going to feel it too. Not that it's, I don't want to say it's a bad thing, right? There are people that are going to be in your database that you're going to stay in touch with because communicating and being in flow with hundreds and hundreds of people is a challenge. There are some people out there that can do it and they're amazing and that's awesome. And there are some people who will work their way up to that. But the one thing that I would definitely recommend people not to do is avoid, you know, think about the people when names pop up as suggestions as people you may want to communicate with. To think about, am I just talking to this person because this system's telling me to? Or do I need to do a better job staying in flow with this person? So this is an opportunity for me to ask more afford questions, learn more things about them so that I don't have to be reminded to contact them. And then on the other side is, hey, maybe this is somebody who should move out of my database because I'm not taking the active management of staying in flow with them. So Matt, you can't see me on my end, but I have my hand raised saying, call on me, call on me, because I want to go back to real quick where you said, I don't, and you, and you hesitated when you said it. You said, I don't know if it's a bad thing. And here's the problem. When it's not genuine, when you know you're part of a system and that person's reaching out, the way I would say I don't think it's a bad thing is, is that they are making a connection with you. They are making, maybe seeing, okay, that's my realtor or that's my insurance agent or that's my whoever that is. And I think when they need, personally need insurance or they need real estate help or they need you know mortgage help, they will probably reach out and call you. Right. The genuine side that makes them go, I have this certain relationship with Garrett where Garrett knows the important hot buttons and the things that are going into my life. When you can bring that real true, genuine side into it, that's where the referrals come from. 100%, no doubt. And that's the, that's the danger side is that when you take a really core good group that you have and you go, sweet, I don't have to even think about this anymore. I'm just going to plug them into here and my system's going to tell me who I have to call this week. Matt, you made the comment about the Monday morning agenda and where it said, you know, where your contacts and it said, I just contacted who my database told me to contact this week, right? Yep. That for me is like, you know, if I fall into that group, believe me, I, I know what you do, but it definitely takes away that side of you calling me up and just having that real honest to goodness, genuine one to talk, which develops the care and concern for their needs, which again, when opportunities come up out there, there's two signs that I'm going to refer you. I'm going to refer you on, hey, I know what you do for a living. That's one piece. And there's another side of like, and you really care about and understand me. So I know, I know I'm running here for a second, but the average person knows 10 real estate agents out there. And I hear people all the time going like, oh, but we have so many realtors in our you know, community. And oh my gosh, everybody knows 10 real estate agents. How in the world am I going to stand out and be different? You know what? 
caring concern for their needs and being genuine when you talk to them and asking questions will set you apart from all of the real estate agents that they know. I 100% guarantee it. Yeah. And this is exactly how you should think about when you start putting together your database and why it's so important to focus on people who you enjoy spending time with because you can have such major impact to those people and they can have such a major impact on you and your business if you are really taking the time to connect with them, be real with them, and bring value to them just in general. Think about it this way. There are tons of businesses out there. There are tons of people out there who are in the top 100 billionaires or whatever in the world that we have no idea who they are because they have figured out how to connect with the most important people in their lives that they are trying to help, but then also in turn helps them grow themselves, their business and their wealth. And this is what you can do with your real estate business if you start with the people who you want to interact with and build your database from there. Yeah. And again, I, I think uh, you know, to kind of just to kind of, you know, wrap this up with some tips and some ideas for you, know, you guys out there. And I'll share with, with you real quick what I try to get people to do with their database. And then uh, Matt, if you don't know if you want to share kind of your thing, you said warehouse and stuff like that. But what I really like is make it simple. You know, you've got a, and this is like, it's like groups inside of groups. It's like I used to explain this as uh, my anthropology class I used to t- that I had in, um, in college. I went to the University of Montana and our anthropology class was a 500 student class. It was taught in this big amphitheater. I remember the instructor, the professor coming out and standing in the front of the room and he says, welcome to Anthropology 101. Uh, you guys are all my students. I want to welcome you guys. We're going to have a great year, a great semester. And he says, first off, he goes, you guys here in these seats, you're all my A students. He says, welcome to Anthropology 101. Then he goes to the next group. He says, you guys are all my B students. Welcome to Anthropology 101. You guys are my, my C students up in this category. And he's just pointing as he's moving up this huge ramped amphitheater that we're all standing in or we're sitting in. And then he goes to the very top and he goes, you guys up there, you're all my D's and F students. Welcome to Anthropology 101. I got to be in that class, by the way. And I was sitting in the D and the F section. So <laughs> that's the way it works. But so... You, know, you look at this entire room, and I think this is – I've always looked at this way. They're all his students, and I think that that's what we need to look at with our database is like the, we got this big group of all these people, but then in his mind, he's kind of correlated these people differently. And the reason those A students are A students is because he's going to be in better flow with them sitting up in front. He's going to have more interaction with them on, a, on an in-class level. Those students are also more likely to go to his his office after hours and talk with him and ask more questions. That's why it's easy for him to be like, you guys are my A students. You've shown up. You're right here. You're in my world. So when I get people to look at their database, you can use the warehouse idea. You can use the idea of like, these are all the people that I know. We're going to put them all into this big group. Now, in that group, there's a sub sub category, which is the sphere, sphere of influence. And those are the people that were like, okay, out of this big group, these are the ones that are really comfortable. I can talk to these people very, very, very often. Super simple. If you, and again, if there's anybody in that group that every 30 days you're going like, I don't know if I want to talk to them, put them back in the, re- the regular database, hone that group in. So it's really high quality. And then if you want to have one extra group out of these two that I just talked about, you can call it your magic group. You can call it your raving fans group. You can call it your whatever A plus group, whatever you want to refer to it as. There's another group there that you can make, which is people that are just amazing referrers that just take care of your business, that make you make you shine. I know a lot of people that sometimes can relate $100,000 they made in one year to one single person that has referred them three pieces of business. That's a raving fan. We need to know who they are. We need to be able to contact them, talk with them in different ways. But that that's as difficult as I try to get people to make their database. And that's how it should be in their CRM. I've seen people make it really over the top. And the problem is you get too many moving parts, too many different systems. It's it's just hard to manage. So that I have found hands down works for 99% of the people. I agree. And by the way, if you're not taking care of your raving fan who's sending you $100,000 in worth of referrals every year or over a course of time, like take a moment and like really treat that person extremely, you know, to something extremely special because they definitely deserve it. I really love this concept of keeping it simple. And I know there's people out there that love doing the A, B, and C categories and things like that. And if that works for you, awesome. I found for myself too, and for a lot of people who have this overwhelm that comes to them when they think about databases, simplicity is so key. 
I don't have, and when I was selling, I didn't have, oh, here are my past clients. Here were the people who were buyers and here are the people who were sellers. Those were notes with inside their contacts. So I know what they've done, but my communication with them didn't change just because they were somebody who bought a house versus selling a house. Maybe there are systems that you have in terms of how you want to communicate with people after the sale that you want to classify so that you make sure you do certain things. Like I always send all my people one week after selling their house, if they move out of state, something you know to remind them of what it was like living here. Okay, great. You can have a system for that to remind you to take certain actions like that. That's good. But in terms of how you communicate with the people to stay in flow with them, Garrett, I like your segments. I have the warehouse. That's all the contacts. I go to the database, sphere of influence, and then your hot list and your warm list to focus on where the business is in front of you right now. You let the hot list and warm list take care of business related things. And then everything else is just, I mean, you know, the people that you want to communicate with. I mean, if you really think about it, you know, the people you want to be in touch with. And I will say, if there are people that you don't know, you or you know them, but they don't know you, but you want them to know you, put them in your database so that you see their names there so that when you see opportunities to go meet somebody, maybe it's somebody who's a top producer in your area or a celebrity or something like that, you know, and you can start to build your own, you know, warehouse of people like that. So when you have the opportunity to connect with them, you're ready. You're ready to bring them into your database and build those quality relationships because I think as you really look at your relationships and how you structure your database, you'll start to realize who are the people that you enjoy spending time with. And your mindset might shift a little bit to, I want to spend more time with people like this. And here's a person that's kind of like that. I want to get to meet them instead of pushing it off somewhere and saying like, oh, I'll never meet that person. Put them in, put them in your warehouse. Why not? Your warehouse can be as large as you want it to. Just make sure you keep your database curated to the people who you really want to stay in flow with. Well, and, and to totally throw in a piece here that I don't want to confuse people with, but like when you look at your top group, your sphere of influence, we talk about, you know, people we could easily pick up the phone and make a phone call to every, every month to confuse this a little bit. And I hope that everybody can can follow the bouncing ball here with me. I have a lot of people in my sphere of influence that I would not pick up the phone and make a phone call to, but I can consistently see them every month and have an amazing conversation with them where we are both laughing and having a good time. And it's a good, solid connection about them, their life, what they're working on, what they've got going on right now, what their goals are. And I count those people as my sphere of influence. So you can put those types of people in there. The danger part of people like that in there is that If the situation that's causing them to be in your sphere goes away, those relationships can fade really fast or all of a sudden we we won't have the ability of reaching out and being in flow with them. And so don't just get stuck on that. They have to be people you have to be able to pick up the phone and make a phone call to. They're people that you need to be able to very comfortably have a forward conversation with on a monthly basis. Like I use my daughter's soccer team all the time. There's a lot of parents on there that I have amazingly awesome relationships with. We have so much fun. We have a game we're going to here in about an hour and we're going to see these guys and we laugh and we joke and we have a great time. And I know everything that's going on in the world. I know the ones that used to be involved in the military. I know the ones and what their jobs currently are right now. I know all their other kids' names and the sports that they play on and the teams that they're involved with. I know their favorite sports teams that they play on that they, sorry, that they follow. The danger side, what I have to be careful with is if for some reason soccer stops or my daughter decides not to play soccer anymore, that group is hard for me to stay in the flow with. I'm not going to pick up the phone and make a phone call to them. So there's a weird kind of line there you got to kind of follow and grow with and that over time, those people may slide into my actual database, but I want to keep them up there right now because they are very important people in my world. Does that make sense, Matt? Am I making sense? That makes perfect sense. And I think the other, the other addition to that is that if you have people in your database or your sphere where you don't have their phone or email, that like we said, that's not required. But if you have a situational relationship like that, or you have a relationship where you don't have contact information, as you move forward in that relationship, you're going to recognize whether or not that's something that you would want to continue after that situation ends as well. And if it is something that you want to continue, you're going to figure out how to keep it going. You know, you're going to yeah. get the phone number. You're going to get the email because you'll do something like, hey, let's grab coffee. You know, we see each other on the sidelines every week. I would love to learn more about what you're doing with your business because we only get a chance to kind of really touch on it when we're here. Are you free for coffee next week? And then that's going to lead to an exchange of cell phone numbers so that you can be like, hey, I'm running five minutes later. I'm five minutes earlier, whatever it is. So you get to choose which relationships you want to carry forward with you in your life. Just know that you're in control of that and choose I don't want to say choose wisely, but choose wisely based on the way, you know, your your heart more so than just your head. Like people say, oh, I want to sell luxury real estate. So I need to know people who have a lot of money. 
Well, if you like those people who have a lot of money that are in your immediate world, awesome. But if you like hate hanging out with those people, like what are you doing? And and you'll actually you're creating a block too because you're creating a stereotype of what that is, and it's preventing you from you know achieving other parts of your goal. So choose wisely. Choose with your with your heart and people that you want to be around and surround yourself with because that's only going to also help you figure out what's next level. I mean, people always say you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Well, that includes your clients. If you're if you're like oh man, I always get like the worst clients that just nitpick on everything. It's like, well, are you hanging out with those people all the time? Because that's going to attract more of those types of people. Well, I think it also is the difference of having to go to work or basically being able to live a great life. And I think there's a lot of people that dread going to work. It's the reason we have the whole thing of I hate Mondays because you're going off to work. It's like, oh, the weekend's over. I'm not at work now for five days and I'll get a weekend again. Well, maybe not all realtors take weekends. So maybe that's not always true. But the reality is, is the, the more you lead with your heart, just as you said, Matt, you're building a business around people that know you, like you and trust you. I think your niches and stuff, you can build in the right ways as you grow that database and you'll find people that you're like, you know what? I'm going to hang around these guys a little bit more. These guys are really connected up into this area. I just need to have a little bit better connection with them up there because I've watched people that will go and just insert themselves into what they think is a high end place to build a database from. And the people that they drag out of there, that's work for a lot of people like that can be a thing that you start to dread over time your database will never never steer you wrong there are there are people that are in the like situations with you they have like commonalities with you you share like interests it's kind of a no-brainer yeah and out of fear of making this episode go longer than it probably should there's two things that i i just thought of as you were talking garrett and, and one is that there are people that you're going to do business with you're going to do transaction with you're going to like them they're going to be nice people but they're not going to be people that you put into your sphere of influence they may live in your database for a short time after you're done with a transaction and then they're just going to end up in your warehouse and guess what that's okay not every one of your clients has to be a best friend of yours. You can actually just be a professional sometimes and help people accomplish their real estate goals. The other thing that I thought of is if you're sitting there going, well, my database is only like 15 people. How do I grow it? Start with the things that you enjoy doing. I know this was a thing for me when I was actively listening and selling up in New Jersey is I would build my database at the gym because I'd go to the gym every day. And I haven't read Ryan Serhant's new book, but I know somebody who has. And they said that that was the big thing for him too when he was growing his business. And if you guys don't know who he is, he's a star of Million Dollar Listing. So like Serhant has a huge, massive team, does everything. I'm not necessarily saying do what he does. But when he started, he had it right. He's like, I'm going to connect with the people who have similar interests. And these are the people that I'm going to enjoy spending time with. So why not do business with them too? Exactly. Matt, what you just said was like, you don't have to have these people turn into the best contacts in the world. And I 100% agree with that. But I do I do think that we're always looking for those commonalities and like interests. I've said to so many people, if I was to get back into real estate right now in my town, every single Saturday, there's a beer brewing class down here at the local home brew shop. I've done it. I've been down there. I, I, I added 10 people, I think it was almost 10 people to my contact management system the, the first time I went down. Uh, I would do that every weekend. They're a great group of guys. It's a whole bunch of retired guys looking for something fun to do. They've all got very different backgrounds. I met a guy that just moved here from Florida to get away from you know that, that type of life. And he's like, we're just now up here in the woods and we're going to retire and hang out and travel and brew beer. And it was interesting out of that group, people were like, let's get everybody's numbers. Like they were excited to pass numbers. Like I want to hear what you're brewing and let's share, like share these recipes and what worked and what didn't work. And I was like, my gosh, this is brilliant, but it only works for, I should say it only works for me, but I have a, a like and a connection in with that, that makes that work. If your thing is music, go down and spend more time around the music area you know, scene and things like that and build it around that. If it's the gym, go to the gym. If you're a horse person, Go down to the horse stables. Spend time down there. Meet those people. You have natural things you can talk about and connect with people over. So I think in building that database, you really need to, again, look at who do you connect with more so than where am I going to find business. It's hard when you're wanting to build a business because what you're looking for is your next transaction. That's where our mindset always is. I got to find a next deal because things are probably tight. But uh, if you can open that up saying, look, yeah, we need to find a deal. But at the same time, I need to grow this database as fast and as quick as I can with people that I can meet in this town. Go do things you like doing. Now, if it's hiking in the woods by yourself, that's a bad idea. Uh, that will not be good. <laughs> yeah, you're not. Well, it depends. If you go hiking on very popular trails and stop and talk to people, maybe you'll make connections. But yes, if you like being by yourself and not talking to people 
it's going to be hard to build the database. But you also said something growing the business and you need to get a transaction because money's tight. This is where the concept of everyone's a potential client comes into play because you know, we say that and then everybody ignores the people that they know and they stop paying attention to the life changes that are happening for them. And they don't realize that everybody in your database has an opportunity to refer you business all the time, but then they don't pay attention to them because they're like, well, I got to get that lead that needs to buy a house in 90 days versus, well, someone in your database might know that person. And that's going to be a much stronger connection. It's going to be a lot less effort. And this is where when people go into not that business networking uh, events and groups are bad, you have to find the right one if you guys are into that kind of thing. But a lot of them, and I've been to many of them, is people looking to get business from you. Everyone's there to like take from other people. Like, ooh, what referrals do you have for me versus just building relationships? I went to one group where everyone was there just about building each other. And it was more of like a, a mastermind, if you will, because any, everybody ended up talking about their businesses and what they were doing to help grow and everything and sharing ideas and advice. And that was super productive. And that led to more referrals out of that group than any other business business networking group I went to that was formally structured to put people from different industries in the room and have them share referrals when like they can only have one realtor in the group. That's a big red flag because they're saying, well, there's only one real estate agent we'll be allowed to refer business to. That's stupid. The network, the group that I got the best joy out of and got business out of, there were several real estate people in there. And it worked great. Well, it's, again, it's 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 an interesting thing as you go and build. And I remember when I was building my database initially, when I was selling real estate, I remember what my what we were, it was funny. We were on a fishing trip. It was my dad, um, and my dad's been a, a, a head CRS instructor for years. He's not currently anymore. Taught with Ninja and been a real estate broker the majority of his life. But we were out having uh, breakfast in a little restaurant over on the coast with another real estate agent. And uh, the realtor was kind of, we were joking around about how much potential is all around us all the time. And he says, you, you, want, he's all, you want to see something? He goes, this is really cool. The, the waitress came over to the table and Bob McDougall, uh, who's our friend, is sitting on the other side of the table. And Bob goes, was it you that was thinking about buying a home or was that somebody else here? And she turns out, and again, we're in a little teeny diner. And she turns around and goes, hey, who was it that was talking about buying a house? And they're like, oh, it was me over here. And one of the guys in the kitchen puts his hand up. My dad was like mortified and I'm, I was young. I was just kind of taking it all in and trying to figure it all out. She goes, oh yeah. And so they actually started talking and Bob looks over at my dad. My dad's like got his hands over his face and Bob says, there's real estate all around us because there's <laughs> always people all around us. Now he was, he didn't even work that marketplace. He was just doing it to prove a point. It's fascinating how much of it it's all around us. There's so many people that need our help. And again, where I want to kind of wrap this up on is what we're doing is not saying, hey, let's go do that and let's go ask for business and let's go chase those people around. But if you build the database right, the business is all around us. There are so many people in there that need our help. There's so many people that need our advice. If they understand that we're genuine, we have care and concern for their needs, and they need to understand what our what our expertise is, which is real estate, which we do through other methods like mailings and other things we can put out. That's where this all builds from. But that's why it's so important to be building and growing the numbers in there because it's, it is a numbers game at the end of the day. You, know, you, you can get lost in the numbers. You can sit there and just focus on, I've got to add people in because I want to make more money. But what I found is the biggest results and the biggest wins I've seen for people is where they actually lose sight of the money. They lose sight of the transactions. And all they do is pour into this group of people into this database and connect with them and find those, those real hot buttons for them. And that's where they get more business than a lot of times they could have ever planned on. Absolutely. And so it starts with having a database. So first, and you all have one, you just may not know where it is right now. So find it, put it together. And then as Garrett says, as you focus on the people in there, that's going to help guide you. It's like when you're focused on the business, that's when the numbers get too big for you to handle because you're like, well, I've, I've closed 300, 400 transactions over the course of my career. How could I possibly stay in touch with all of those people? It's like, well, maybe you don't have to. Or if you're trying to stay in touch, that's the wrong intention. Be in flow with the people who are most important to you and the people that you are most important to. And you're going to run a great business, but it's got to start with getting that database together and just paying attention to it. Well, remember the math on it, Matt. Every single person will have two opportunities to refer you in the next 12 months. And if you think about that, that means if you've got a group of 100 people, that's a group that has 200 potential opportunities to refer you. When you look and you get focused on like, I've got 400 people or how in the world am I supposed to stay in flow with them? You don't want to. That's 800 potential referrals out there. And the problem is, is what we do is we actually do a 
really bad job at staying in flow with them and we get none of them where you would have done better just picking a group of 100 and staying in really good flow with them. Oh, so true because those referral opportunities will only come to you if they're thinking about you when they're having those real estate conversations. And if you're staying in touch with people, they're only thinking about you when you are in touch for that five minute conversation once every so often. But if you're in flow and somebody else comes to them to talk about real estate, they're going to be like, well, have you called Garrett yet? Because I mean, you got to talk to him. Well, and remember, you know, if they know 10 real estate agents out there, the one that asked them about their kid and their soccer event and the tournament and how they do, you know, last week, that's actually the one that's going to come to mind first. The one that knows about how grandma's doing right now and is she feeling okay and she get past that little, you know, the flu she had or whatever, that's the one that's going to come to mind first out of the 10 realtors that they know. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. They want to just keep showing up as a realtor where in the reality, you need to, need to show up as a person. And for those of you who are listening to this that are not in real estate, this works in everything. Garrett, you hit it right there. And that's, I think, the best note to end on is it starts with being an actual human being in any business that you're in. If you're a human being and you care about other people, you're going to see some great things happen. But you got you to gotta start with that. And I know that we keep trying to wrap this up here, but it's interesting just saying what you said. I, I'm not sure if I've ever shared on a podcast, but I... Over my points of my career, I've coached a gentleman who's this head sound engineer for Rob Zombie, Cindy Lauper, Bush, Billy Bob Thornton. So he does a sound for them. Like that's what his job is. They they hire him to come out on the road with them. He's the guy when you go to the concert that sits in the middle of the audience with all the knobs and dials and basically tunes in the sound. He came to me going like, my business is really slow. I've got, I don't have a whole lot of tour dates lined up and all this kind of stuff. And I started asking him, I said, tell me all about Rob Zombie. Some of you may know who Rob Zombie is or heard of his music. But I said, tell me all about him. And he just unloaded on me about all this great stuff that Rob Zombie is and what he does. I said, how about Billy Bob Thornton? Tell me all about him. He, he just went off about 007 and James Bond and he's a red wine drinker and they just went, he went all this great stuff. I said, when was the last time you called them and talked to them about that stuff? And he said, why don't? I said, well, what's your typical conversation when you talk to them? Well, what are your next tour dates coming up? What do you got lined up? I mean, what are you going to be doing? What's happening here? The interesting thing is the minute I got him to stop talking about business and about what he does and about what the next thing is that he can help them with and start talking to them about all the things that are important to them in their life, their kids, their hobbies, their movies, their whatever it might be. He said, all of a sudden, he goes, my, my calendar got filled. And I said, how did it get filled? He goes, they kept saying, hey, while I've got you on the phone, my friend just lost their sound guy. I got to get you guys hooked up. Literally, his calendar filled up to the point that I actually ended up stopped coaching him because we could not get times and dates that would work because he was in like England and traveling all over the world. And it literally made it impossible for us to even find time to meet. But that's the crazy thing about it is that it works in any industry I've ever seen. So yes, Matt, I, I wanted to share that because if you're sitting here going like, well, this is great, but I'm not in real estate, I don't care. I've seen it work in every industry I've ever applied it to. If you deal with people, and people generate what happens in your world, all this stuff is 100% even playing field. I love that because he turned himself from a commodity into a person, into a relationship. And that was the game changer. And that's going to be the game changer for all of you that are listening. Exactly right. Well, Matt, we, we made it go way longer than we were expecting. We did, but you know, I think it was this was fun. It was fun hashing on this, and I think we started off with some specifics and got into some really good concepts that all hopefully all of you have taken away and gotten some good value out of. And are hopefully we, I mean, this is our true, true hope is that you go put this into play in your business and that you see results from it. Yes, and I think as we've said before, if you go and you implement this stuff and you have results with it, leave comments. I want to I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. If you've done this stuff and you've seen results with it, put comments down below because. Um, I've always in my career found that you guys learn the best from each other. I mean, I can put ideas out there. I can say, hey, go do this. I can share what I've seen with other people. But it's so much more powerful when one of you goes, yeah, I did that and this was my results. So if you have those, please share them. I agree. Well, thank you, everybody. We appreciate you. We appreciate your time. Have an amazing day and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you for joining us here on the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast. We appreciate your time and attention. If you receive some value out of this episode, we would love for you to share it, subscribe to the podcast, and if you feel so compelled, to leave us a review. Have an amazing day. We'll see you soon.